Hello, friends. I'm Aria from Chicago. Before I tell you my incredible story, please like and subscribe. I know everyone thinks their dads are strong, but I knew for a fact that mine was the strongest. He was an army major and I was super proud of him, but because of his job, he was gone for months. Mom left us when I was a baby, so grandma took care of me in dad's absence. But when I was in seventh grade, he gave me the best news ever. He was getting remarried and I was getting a new mom and a sister. Dad got me the most gorgeous pink dress for his wedding and everyone couldn't stop gushing about how pretty I looked. Until my stepsister Jenny crashed into me and spilled her orange juice all over my hair and clothes. I, I'm so sorry, there was a bee chasing me. It's okay, the wedding's over anyway. My stepmom doted on me and Jenny, well, she was also pretty awesome. But sometimes she went overboard with her kindness. Aria, I made these napkins for you with my own hands. That would have been cute if Jenny hadn't made that out of the dress I wore on our parents' wedding day. Once, Jenny and I were playing in a nearby park, and after a few hours, we felt hungry. So Jenny went home to fetch something to eat. Suddenly, I heard her screaming, so I ran to her and found one of our neighbors holding her by her collar. What are you doing, Mrs. Sparkly? I caught this little thief trying to break into your home. She was crawling through the kitchen window. That's because I forgot the key and no one's home. Yeah, she's not a thief. She's my sister. Your sister? Uh, I'm sorry, honey. You're so pretty. You both don't look related at all. It was true that Jenny and I looked different. The way Mrs. Sparkly said that made me feel bad. And Jenny looked ready to explode. And you look like you're related to a family of pigs. Here, eat some dirt. Jenny grabbed a fistful of mud, threw it on Mrs. Sparkly's face, and ran away. Dad had to face the anger of a furious Mrs. Sparkly for an hour that evening. Soon, Jenny joined my school, and I was glad to introduce her to my friends. But I noticed that she tried to copy me in everything. We ended up buying the same clothes, she joined the school's drama club like me, and she even brought pasta to school every day like me, even though she hated it. Then one day, I got to know she wanted to play the role I was auditioning for in the school play, so I simply stepped back to give her the chance and she did manage to land the role. When we got home, she happily broke the news to mom and dad, but just then, dad got a call and when he hung up, he cried with joy. It was your drama teacher. Some casting director watched your recent play and he wants to cast you in an upcoming teen movie. I was ecstatic. Dad said he'd take us all to dinner at a fancy restaurant to celebrate, but that night, Jenny got a bad headache and mom had to stay back to take care of her. After that day, I started getting popular in school. Everyone suddenly wanted to hang out with me, but I felt Jenny slowly growing distant. She no longer wanted to play with me at home, and at school, she'd often say awful things to embarrass me. Did you guys know that Arya ate her bookers when she was little? Ew! And she loves smelling her socks after a sweaty gym session. Whenever I told mom about it, Jenny started crying like a baby and said she was just having some harmless fun. Six months passed, and one day, Dad got a call that he and his team had to leave for Afghanistan immediately. A couple of days after Dad left, we got the most terrible news. Dad and a few of his teammates had gone missing. I was devastated, but Mom and Jenny acted like everything was normal. It was Jenny's birthday in a week, and both of them were busy planning for the party. Arya, should I get a Barbie cake or a unicorn cake? How can you even think about celebrating when there's still no news about Dad? It's my 13th birthday. I can't let anyone ruin it. Besides, who knows if he'll ever be found. That made me so angry. I gave Jenny a tight slap. She pounced on me and we fought like wildcats until mom pulled us apart. When she heard what happened, she grounded me for a week. But when the party was in full swing, I may have sneaked into the kitchen and sprinkled some extra pepper in the food and poured a bottle of vinegar into the lemonade. Mom, I feel like I ate the sun. Get me some lemonade, quick. What did you mix in it? It tastes like pee. Ugh. The party was ruined. And obviously, it didn't take long for Mom and Jenny to figure out who was responsible for it. Your daddy spoiled you way too much, Arya. But now it's time to knock some sense into that pretty little head of yours. Mom placed a mop bucket in front of me and asked me to clean the kitchen. Just then, I saw Jenny walk out of my room with all my favorite dresses. Since you didn't get me a birthday cake, I'm taking these. Oh, and I also like the headband you're wearing. Jenny snatched it from my head and put it on hers, and Mom didn't say a word. 
Two years passed and there was still no news of dad or his teammates. But I never lost hope. Several acting offers poured in after my movie stint, but I refused them all since I was more interested in studying and topping my grades. Besides, I knew if I got more popular, Jenny would resent it and find ways to make my life miserable. When I reached the 10th grade, a new girl named Cheryl joined our class mid-session. Our teacher made her sit with me so that I could help her catch up on the work she'd missed. But soon, I noticed something really weird about her. She didn't smile or laugh at all. Do you know what happens when an elephant feels dizzy? It elephants! What's a cow's favorite holiday? Moo Year's Eve! Soon, the whole class was gossiping about how weird Cheryl was. Someone even started a rumor that she was a robot. Then one day, I entered the classroom and saw Jenny's minions had pinned Cheryl to a wall and Jenny was tickling her. Why can't you laugh? Are you really a robot? Stop it. Leave her alone. I will. When she smiles. I'm sure Cheryl doesn't want to waste her smile on a moron like you. Just then, our teacher entered and everyone went back to their seats. After that incident, Cheryl and I grew super close. She told me that she had a rare condition called Mobius syndrome that made it impossible for her to have any facial expressions. The kids at my previous school kept bullying me, so I begged mom to shift me to a new one. But I guess I'll always be a weirdo. Cheryl, you're perfect just the way you are. I'm gonna make sure no one makes you feel otherwise. I asked our teacher if Cheryl and I could organize workshops to educate kids about Mobius syndrome, and she gladly agreed. Our workshops were a great success. Every kid who attended told Cheryl how brave she was for talking about her condition, including our school's most popular jock, Chris. You're awesome, Cheryl, just the way you are. OMG, did Chris just call me awesome? Pinch me, Aria, so I know it's not a dream. Even our principal praised us and told me it was heartwarming to see the efforts I'd put in to help Cheryl. A few days later, we had a debate competition in which both Cheryl and I participated. When the results were announced, I stood first and Cheryl stood second. We both hugged each other, but just then, Cheryl's mom marched up on stage and started yelling at her. You always stood first in your previous school. What happened to you? Why have you suddenly turned stupid? But she came in second, and that's pretty awesome too. You should be happy for her. Of course you'd say that since you bagged the top spot. Cheryl, this girl's your competition. You need to stay careful. Whatever did that mean? After that day, Cheryl and I participated in a few more competitions, all of which I won while she stood second or third. She didn't seem to mind, but I knew her mom was giving her a tough time for it. She thinks I was better off in my previous school. But doesn't she care about all the bullying you faced? She says because of my condition, it's something I have to learn to live with. And here I thought my stepmom was a witch. Months passed and soon it was time for prom night. Cheryl had a massive crush on Chris since our workshop days, and she felt he liked her too. I think he's gonna ask me out for prom. I'm so excited, I've already decided what I'm gonna wear. Just then, I saw Chris heading towards us, but instead of asking Cheryl, he asked me out. I felt awful, and obviously, I politely turned him down. Why did you do that? The way he was looking at you? I think he really likes you. You're so lucky, Arya. Everyone likes you. Oh, I have my share of haters too. Besides, how can I go out with a boy my best friend has a crush on? Remember, sisters before misters? Later that day, our science teacher had asked us to prepare a project and told us the best one would get a scholarship opportunity at a prestigious university in New York. I need to win this one. I'm pretty sure my stepmom wouldn't spend a single penny on my college education. And if I win this competition, mom would finally stop breathing down my neck. No matter which of us wins, a pizza party with lots of ice cream is guaranteed. For the next few days, Cheryl and I got busy with our projects. When we brought them to school on the submission day, I was surprised to see how amazing her project was. This looks so incredible. I'm sure you're winning this time. You really think so? I spent the last three nights working on it. Just then, it was announced that we had to keep our projects in the auditorium for the teachers to review. After placing my project next to Cheryl's, I was about to leave when a hand roughly turned me around. How dare you agree to go out with Chris? I asked him out for prom night, but he told me he was taking you. What the fudge? First Cheryl and now Jenny? Did the entire school have a crush on that guy? I have no idea why he said that. He did ask me out, but I refused. You lying witch. Suddenly, Jenny pushed me hard and I landed straight on Cheryl's project. Oh God, Jenny, what did you do? 
I frantically tried saving Cheryl's project, but just then I saw her walk in. What's taking you so long, Arya? Ah, my project! I, I'm sorry, Cheryl, it was an accident. Stop lying, Arya. I just saw you ruin this project. I tried to stop her, Cheryl, but she said she had to win this competition at all costs. I was shocked at how evil Jenny could be. I was about to slap her, but Cheryl caught my hand midair, and my heart broke to see the distrust in her eyes. I can't believe you'd stoop so low to win a competition. I should have believed my mom. All you ever cared about was winning. Our friendship never meant anything to you. That's not true. I tried to stop Cheryl, but she ran away with tears in her eyes as Jenny smirked at me. I was summoned to the principal's office, but given my spotless track record, I was let off after a stern lecture. After that day, Cheryl refused to talk to me and started hanging out with Jenny instead. Watching those two together made my blood boil, and I couldn't concentrate on my studies. For the first time, I got a C in science, my favorite subject. My home life was already a mess, and whatever little happiness I found in school was being destroyed by Jenny. On prom night, I was in my bed watching my favorite MSA videos when Jenny barged into my room, dressed like a wannabe model. How does it feel to be a loser, Arya? Sitting all alone on prom night in your tacky clothes. Why do you hate me so much? What have I ever done to you? Remember mom's wedding day? I was the flower girl, yet everyone kept talking about how pretty you looked. And then I bagged that play, but you got chosen for a movie. You've always tried to one-up me. Aria's so pretty. Aria's a genius. Aria, Aria, Aria. I didn't do it intentionally. And is it really my fault that I'm good at what I do? No, but do you have any idea how that makes me feel? So technically, I should have stopped my growth just because you weren't growing at the same pace? You know what, Jenny? I am not responsible for your insecurities, and I am so done with you. The moment she left, I called Chris and told him I was ready to go to prom with him if he was still interested. He gladly agreed, and when I arrived at the party on Chris's arm, I could see Jenny's jaw drop to the floor. And then she looked angrier than a raging bull and came charging at me. But before she could reach me, someone stepped in between us. Don't you dare mess with my best friend. Cheryl? Y you said you wouldn't be attending the prom. Well, guess what? I changed my mind and I am so glad that I did. How else would I have gotten the chance to hear you bragging to your friends about how you lied to ruin things between me and Aria? Jenny looked stunned for a moment. Then she tried to attack Cheryl, but before she could, a crowd of angry girls picked her up and threw her out. Cheryl apologized to me a lot, and I decided to give her another chance. Later that night, when Chris dropped me home, I opened the main door, but right then, a bag came flying at me. Thankfully, I dodged it just in time. How dare you think I'll let you into this house after what you did to Jenny? Stealing the boy she likes? Humiliating her at prom? Take your bag and get lost. Go scrub someone else's toilets now. No one talks to my daughter like that. It was Dad! I was thrilled to see him and ran straight into his arms. He'd listened to every word of what Mom said, and he was furious. Dad asked me if this is how I'd been treated in his absence, and he immediately sent Mom and Jenny packing. Dad then told me he'd been captured by the enemy and held hostage for two years. But then the government struck a deal with them and they released him. I missed you so much, Dad. I missed you more, sweetheart. As Dad pulled me in for a hug, I knew my life would be perfect again. 